Today we are going to be starting on the second lecture on the Machine Learning 101 class. So you're actually not missing out anything if you are joining this class right from here. You only need to go back to review the first class, which is actually an uh, explanation about how this course is organized. If you've not subscribed, please click on the subscribe button immediately uh, below this video so that you get updates when a new lesson is made. So today's class, we are going to be looking at overview of machine learning. So from today's class up onwards, any of the classes or any of the lectures, I'm also going to have Jupyter Notebook open. In this case, it, it means that from now on, you'll be getting used to, uh, to using Jupyter Notebook to write code. So let's go to the screen and let's get started right now. So this is lesson two, as you can see, and we are going to cover the goal of machine learning we're also going to look at how machine learning works. We are going to look at a handwritten digits example, and then we are going to be looking at some machine learning times. Now, what is the goal of machine learning? The goal of machine learning includes, for instance, understanding spoken instruction, or generally speaking, the goal of machine learning is trying to make the systems or create systems that will do something that humans do generally. So this may include understanding and responding to spoken instructions. So you can actually speak to some machine and it responds to you and communicates with you just like humans. Or to understand handwritten text, you scribble something using a pen and a paper and a machine can easily understand it. Recognize possible danger, drive a car, recognize somebody's face in a photo, predict the population of, of the country in the future, in some future year, predict stock market trends, play a game with someone, and all and so on. So the list actually continues indefinitely. So this is the goal of machine learning. You want to use the machine to do what humans can do. And also I forget machine learning applied in health. So a machine can actually perform a surgery uh, on someone without a physician. So this is also one of the goals of machine, of machine learning. So how does it really work? To understand how machine learning works, we need to compare it with how traditional programs work. If you look at the screen, you'll see how traditional programs work. It's shown in figure one here, where you have the input data and the program, and you have the output. So basically, you have the input, and you have a computer system that processes the output, and you also have the program that you've written to actually do the, 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 the computation. The program runs in the computer or runs in the processor and produces an output. Now, this is how traditional computer programming works when you write programs in Python or C++ or C Sharp in case you're a programmer. Now, let's now look at how machine learning works. In case of machine learning, it's actually a bit different. In case of machine learning, we provide the input and we provide the output and we allow the machine to write or generate the program. The advantage of this is that when the input changes, then it means that the program can actually rewrite itself to be able to handle new inputs. Let's take for instance, you have a self-driving car, you have a program to drive this car, and then later a new model of car is built, you don't have to rewrite this program. You have to allow the program to adjust itself or rewrite itself and to, to provide another program to be able to recognize new inputs. So generally, this is the case, or this is the, the, the goal of machine learning, to build systems in, it, in itself. Instead of programmers or, or system designers building systems, the program could actually, the system can actually build itself. So let's take, for example, handwritten digits. Uh, in my website, this website for this lecture, you may see some adverts. I have to pay my bills, so that is why this, this uh, site is actually monetized. So if you have, let's take a handwritten digit example, recognizing handwritten digits of 1 to 10. Somebody writes a number from 1 to 10, and you have to actually recognize what number has been written. To recognize this number, you need to understand the written digit and then classify it into one of 10 classes, one to, to one of 10 classes, zero to nine, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now let's assume that for each digit written in a pen, you need to enclose them in a box 
of 28 by 28 pixels. So what it means is that each of these boxes is a 28 by 28 pixels box. So it means that a digit written in hands can actually be represented using a 28 by 28 pixel box and the content of this box. I'm going to read directly from the page. It says how to proceed. Based on our example, we need to provide an input and output, but let's look at a machine learning approach. The input in this case would be a set of vectors, each representing a number. The output will be a model that takes these vectors and gives us the actual number. So as you mean this, this is a grid of 28 by 28. You have 28 by 28 equals 700 and, uh, 748. So you have a, a set of input of 748 items. After evaluating these 748 items, you have to provide an output of one single number, which is either 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 10 or 0 to 10. So what it means is that in machine learning, we, we need an input vector, or we need a set of items, and we need categorically 1 or 0 to 9. So let's, uh, let's go a little bit further, and that becomes clearer. To get the task done, we need a large set of handwritten numbers, x1 to xn, and this is called the, tra the training set. What it means is that for 110 digits recognition to work, you need to first provide set of, let's say, millions of 110 digits, and also the classes each one belong. Let's say a million uh, one, a million two, a million zeros, all the way to nine. So all these are called training sites. More like you are going to train the system by showing it each digit and telling it this is one, look at this, this is two, look at this, this is three, and so on. So millions of them you use it to carry out what is called the training or the learning. So this set of input you provide is called the training set, or it's it also called the learning set. So there are two times now you have to keep in mind. The training set is this set of input you provide, and the target vector is this categories of 0 to 9, just 9 categories that the input is going to map to. So to illustrate, as you mean you want to search, uh, you want a search dog to find an escaped fugitive. What do you first do? You provide maybe the clot or uh, some belongings of this fugitive for the dog, so it helps to smell it to understand the smell of this fugitive or the scent of this fugitive. And with this, it can actually track uh, this fugitive using is the science to try to see if it could recognize the science any other place. So training has to be provided first using a training site, and this model can learn from this training uh, from the training site, and then is able to perform additional operations. So all this explanation is also provided here. Now the process of training is called learning. Learning is the same as the learning you have in machine learning. So you have to make the machine learn first. That is the first step. You have to make the machine learn by providing a set of inputs called the training set. For each set of inputs, each item in the set of inputs will correspond to a target, which is called also a target vector. So keep this in mind. All right, so now let's see what we've done so far. We've learned about the learning or the training. We have learned about the test data. Now the test data, I've not mentioned the After training the machine learning model, or after training the, the system, then you need to test it to see if it works. Let's say you provide, let's say, some inputs. Some, you write a few handwriting digits and provide and see if it recognizes. So this, this few uh, sets of data you provide to test the model is called the test data set. Now, if all this is not perfectly clear, don't worry. We are going to get it clearer as we apply examples as we go. Also, after uh, testing, the ability of the model to categorize correctly is called generalization. Remember that the original digits are placed in 28 by 28 pixel box. It actually, be, it actually could be 20 by 20, 10 by 10, 48 by 48. Now, the idea of placing 
the impute inside a restricted area or restricting it to some boundaries is called pre-processing. The idea of transforming input data is known as feature extraction or pre-processing. And this helps to reduce the variability of each of the digits or the variability in the input and makes machine learning process easier. <clears throat> so now you've learned two more times, pre-processing and feature extraction. Now, in machine learning, there are a whole lot of things you need to learn. So these are a few of them. Try to review this note and see how you can get, get it clear. Now I'm going to open Jupyter Notebook and I'm going to see if I can quickly show you one or two things, at least how to use Python and Jupyter Notebook. So to do that, go to Programs and go to Anaconda, if you have installed Anaconda, as I mentioned, and go to Jupyter Notebook, as you can see here on the screen. So open it. If you open it, it first starts with this blank screen. So it's actually going to start the server. After it starts the server, it then starts the client where we can actually work. So at this point, it opens up the client. So maybe I'll use a couple of minutes to show you how to start and run Jupyter Notebook or how to write uh, in Jupyter Notebook. So what you'll do is to go to new. Let me see if I can increase the size of this. So go to new and simply choose Python 3. So if you choose Python 3, it will open a new Jupyter Notebook. What you are going to do again, simply go to this place, click on this Untitled, and just give it a name. Let's call it Lecture 2, and just say Rename. So this is how Jupyter Notebook opens. It's in cells. What you can see here is a Jupyter Notebook cell. So that is how it works. You don't have a, a full page, you can start writing programs. You can write your program right inside the cells. So let's say we want to do, let's just say 5 plus 6. So you've written a program or you've written a line of code and you want to execute it, you simply click on run and it gives you the output. So for every subsequent class we are going to go through, we are going to leave Jupyter Notebook open in this way. And in this way, it becomes a little clearer for you as we go along. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Remember, if you've not subscribed, subscribe right now and also share this around so that we can build our community of machine learning one-on-one -on -one learners.